Okay, now that we have seen the sequence consensus specifications and the multi-paxos, the first version of multi-paxos, then we are going to look into the correctness of these algorithms. And to do this, we are going to follow the same steps that Lampert took to provide a proof for the single value Paxos. So here we are. So we'd like to know how to prove that this algorithm is correct or convince ourselves that this algorithm is correct. And as I said, we built the proof on the structure of Paxos. Very good. So here is our algorithm. And it is consisting of two phases. The prepare phase, which is shown in yellow here, and the accept phase, which is shown in pink. So on propose, you start the prepare phase and collect promises. So, so that is what you do here. On you start the prepare phase and you collect promises from acceptors. And the sequence at the highest round is adopted and extended. So that is what is this part is doing. This is the sequence at the highest round is adopted and extended. And the extension here guarantees that it is a unique extension. We just add the command if it was not there. Then we send accepts and then we collect accepted from a majority. You can see here, uh, if not aborted. And so that is what is, has been chosen. This is what's the idea of the algorithm. It's to really understand this algorithm, we would like to look to the notion of uh, a ballot array, which represents the state of the acceptors. So just to look to this picture, you will see that we have three replicas, Q1 to Q3, and we every round of accepted um, proposals are in one row. So this is row zero, where empty sequence is initially accepted by all acceptors. This is round one, where accept to Q1 accepted sequence with only C1, and acceptors Q2 and Q3 did not accept anything. And here is a situation where uh, acceptor Q1 accepted the sequence C2, C3, and acceptor Q2 accepted the sequence C2, C3. So now we know what is a ballot array. So we want to understand then the notion of a chosen sequence. Okay. So if we say that we let VA, this VA sub Q1N will be the sequence accepted by accept to Q at round N. The sequence accepted by accept to Q at round N. So if we look to this uh, notion, so the sequence accepted by acceptor Q1 at round 1 is this. Then we say that a sequence V is chosen at round N if there exists a quorum of acceptors at round N such that V is a prefix of what Q at round N has accepted and that is for every acceptor in Q, in the quorum Q. Q, a quorum is a majority set. So if we look to round zero and we take a quorum, for example, this one, then we see that the sequence, the empty sequence is accepted at round zero. If we go to n equal two, we see that there is a majority set here or a quorum that accept the sequence consisting of C2. We say that a sequence is chosen 
if v is chosen at round n for some round n so so if we if we look to this table as a whole we see that empty sequence is chosen so it's accepted here the sequence consisting only of um, c2 is also chosen the sequence the sequence consisting of C2 followed by C3 is, is also chosen. And that is what we are saying. If we look at this round, the empty sequence is chosen, the sequence C2 is chosen, the sequence C2, C3 is chosen, and the sequence C2, C3, C1 is chosen. And the longest sequence chosen is this sequence. Then it is accepted at round 5 here. So... I just want to show you our single value Paxos invariants. We are not going to look to them in detail, but just to have them in mind. And we will see then that our, uh, we have discussed this before, and we will see that we are going to follow more or less the same steps to provide a proof of uh, sequent Paxos. So let us look now to multi-paxos invariants. So here is our invariant, basic invariant. What is it? It says if a proposal with sequence V a number N is issued, then there is a quorum S of acceptors such that V is an extension of the sequence of the highest number proposal less than n accepted by all acceptors in S. So first of all, notice that when we say a quorum, we mean a majority set. Okay, so let us try to understand this. Okay, assume we are here and a proposal is issued, in this case, a proposal with C1. So what we are saying is that if we issue this proposal with C1, and here is, uh, it is accepted here by Q1, then this proposal, then there is a quorum. And here is, a, for example, this quorum, where this proposal is an extension of the highest number proposal before that, and, the, and these proposals are actually the empty set, then it is uh, an extension of the empty set. Okay, very fine. If we look at n equals 3, we, we assume that we issued this proposal. That is fine. So assume that we, if we look to a quorum like this, and we look to the whole array here, we see that the highest number proposal less than n, which n is equal 3 in this case, is actually that. And what we're trying to maintain is that our proposal here is having the sequence C2 as a prefix. And that is completely fine. The same thing holds here. Look to this one. If we issue this proposal and we look to the highest number proposal in a quorum, for example, these two, we see that this proposal is an extension of this. So this is what you say. So the highest number proposal accepted before round four is C2, C3. So it is okay to issue in round four to issue C2, C3A or at round five issue C2, C3, B and D. And this is because if we come here and we pick these two acceptors, we will find the highest number proposal is this one. So our proposal is an extension of that. So the algorithm maintains this invariant. This is done in the prepare phase by reserving the acceptors not to accept a proposal less than n. So what I mean by that, in the prepare phase, for example, we ask the acceptor not to accept proposal less than 5. And when we do that, we prevent 
in this case, a proposal to, to be accepted by Q2 and Q3, for example, pro this proposal. So that is really what is done. That is what the prepare phase does. Promise not to accept a proposal that is less than N. So now, observe the following. We know that we, if we issue a proposal, for example, at round 5, we are guaranteed that in a quorum, for example here, a quorum consisting of Q1 and Q2, and we will not accept any proposal less than 5. So now, if a sequence is chosen, and in this case the sequence C2 is chosen, then whenever we get a quorum, we are guaranteed that this quorum will have one of its, at least one of its uh, elements will have the chosen sequence. So in this case, if we pick this quorum, we are guaranteed to get this one. And we said now, because we have guaranteed the invariant that what we are going to issue here will be an extension of that. So it means that if something is chosen before, now we are guaranteed to issue proposals that are also extension of that chosen sequence. This is what we say here. If a sequence V is chosen in round N, then V is an extension of all sequences chosen in rounds less than N. Now things start to become easy. So this is was the single value consensus invariant, and this is now our consensus invariant, which says if a proposal with sequence V is chosen, then every higher number proposal issued now will have V as a prefix. That is fine. And again, if a proposal with sequence V is chosen, then every higher number proposal accepted by an acceptor will have V as a prefix because acceptor accept what have been issued. And we can go further and say if a proposal with sequence V is chosen, and every higher number proposal that is chosen has V as a prefix. So, so this is a summary of, of all our invariants that we discussed. This one we discussed first, and it was guaranteed by the promise, and it implies this one, which says every higher number proposal issued has V as a prefix, which implies this one, which says every higher number proposal accepted by any acceptor has V as a prefix, and this implies this one, which says every higher number proposal that is chosen has V as prefix. And so now we have this, and that is fine. Every higher number proposal accepted by an acceptor has V as a prefix. Okay, so this is uh, P2 in principle, which says if U is chosen in N and V is chosen in N prime, and N prime is greater or equal N, and also u is a prefix of v. So this was um, chosen. We know that from the algorithm that the proposers will know which proposal is chosen and therefore if a sequence u is decided then it was chosen in some round because the, the proposer gets to know what is chosen and therefore it can decide on that. Okay, so let's now look to the properties of the uh, sequence consensus specification agreement. If any two sequences are decided, then one is a prefix of the other. This is guaranteed directly since either n um, is less or equal n prime or the reverse and these give us 
This is guaranteed by P2. So agreement is guaranteed. Integrity says if P decides in U and then decides on V, then U is a prefix of V. And we know that because the, the round number of V is higher than the round number of U. So that is fine. And validity says only sequences of proposed non-duplicate commands are decided from the promise response. A new command is added only if it is not in the sequence uh, that has been previously chosen. So this is we see in this code here. So this actually finishes uh, the proof of uh, multipaxos or sequence paxos. And from now on, we are going to look to opportunities for optimization of these algorithms. And there's a number of optimization that can be done. First, we can uh, do prepare only once in the beginning and, and pipeline accepts. And we will also be able to trim all these sequences that, has be, that are sent back and forth between the proposer and the acceptors and the learners also. Okay, thank you.